Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 43, where you email me your questions about Flat Earth or non-Flat Earth related questions, that's fine, to M Sargent, S-A-R-G, I'm sorry, M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at Comcast.net, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And it's been a while. I know it's been like a month since I've done these, but let's jump right into it. I've been trying to catch up and I got really, really tied up with the eclipse thing. But I'm back. I think my voice is back in working order, so let's get right to it. First email, and I know this goes back a ways, early July. It's called Telescope. Hi, I'm Mr. Sergeant. I am planning to purchase a telescope for the first time. There are so many brands out there, and I was wondering if you could recommend one. I didn't want one with a fisheye lens, so I don't know what to look for. Thanks so much for all the hard work you do in bringing the truth to us. I have learned so much. Thanks again, Rosie Schmidt. Uh, Rosie, I honestly <clears throat> don't know that much about telescopes. So if anybody has a good recommendation, uh, you know what? I do have a recommendation, but it's not for a telescope. Go, go over and ask somebody on Crow 777's channel. C R O W seven seven seven. He he's a big big telescope guy, and he should be able to help. And and he's a flat earther, as far as I know, or at least he's not a globe earther. So check him out when you get a chance. Just ask in there. In fact, it's probably posted in there somewhere. But email him or message him, and and he should be able to get back to you. This next one's called F E Teaser. Mark, also, I think you should encourage all photo and video fans to get out there and try to photograph detail on the lunar surface during the so solar eclipse on August 21st. I'm sure you've seen the stuff about Rahu and how it's not the moon that causes the eclipse. This should be easy to prove or disprove. If multiple people are on it during totality all across America, we can settle the debate about what causes a solar eclipse. If it's the moon, it doesn't disprove the flat earth. It just gives more detail into how it works. I live really close to the area where totality will be at its peak, but I'm just worried it'll be cloudy. Please encourage people to do long exposure shots of the moon during totality. Thanks, Mark. Flat Earth is so much fun. And that's by Anonymous Photographer. And thank you, Anonymous. Hopefully some people do that. I know I'm a little late because the eclipse was on Monday. And it's now Thursday after the eclipse. It took me that long. But I'm, there's a lot of people. Some really, really great stuff. In fact, the next Strange World, I'm trying to get Mike Helmick and deep inside the rabbit hole on to discuss all the wonderful, interesting things that happened during the eclipse. This one's called Military Personnel. Mark, do you suppose that any members of Admiral Byrd's missions are still, still survive today? Uh, and he has a quote, age is relative. Only your relatives should know your age. And that was by REM. Then anyway, Rick sent that. Rick, I, I doubt it. I really, really doubt it because remember, uh, Operation High Jump. Operation High Jump was in 1956. Operation Deep Freeze, yeah, there may be a chance that somebody from 1956, if they were young enough, I just don't know. I, I've been looking for something that, that's out there. But yeah, if anyone knows anybody that might be still alive from Operation Deep Freeze, that would be very, very interesting. And of course, they'd have to be part of the plane discovery missions that, where they sent out the planes over and over again. But don't know. Maybe. This one's called A Little Thought. Hi, Mark. Take a look at this article. It's only a short one, but it's interesting because they are not making fun of this guy's experiments. And I have offered no facts to prove him wrong. What do you think? By the way, I'm the guy who sent you the DJ turntable flat earth pictures. Awesome. Also, you can talk about the reflectors on the moon on one of your secret shows. And let's see, flat earth or used to spirit level to prove that the earth is flat. Yeah, that was from D Marble. Yeah, yeah, he got a bunch of attention. A lot of it was negative, of course, but now, ever since then, I mean, this was July 4th when this email was sent. Again, sorry for taking so long. But now D Marble is going to be hitting 20,000 subscribers. And, and I just met him at the Flat Earth Meetup in Seattle not very long ago with Paul on the Plane and Patricia Steer and 50 other people. It was great. It's fantastic. Let's see here. This one's called Sculpture by Lorelei. Mark, Albert wants to know if that globe and sword symbol is in your videos. Intros can be ca carved like a carved or copied like it's not copyrighted or anything and it i i don't think so The you know i've got i've got three of them now the the first one i used was an old old mercator map it was a thing from the first star trek series and i'm pretty sure it's not copyrighted 
because it was like from one episode with the evil universe with evil Spock and evil Kirk. And then I changed it to a generic sword through the globe, but that was also taken from a Star Trek thing. I, again, I don't think it's copyright. They're, they're just little minor things that are inside the show. But the last one I had made, and I think I made it after July 4th, I had Nicole Cote, who is also a Flat Earth community member, with the double swords, the swords coming from both sides into the earth, and they're punching out the bottom, and there's flames and stuff coming out the bottom. That's definitely not copyrighted. So if you see anything on my channel, hey, go for it. Whatever you want to use in in my my intro and in the in the symbols and everything, go for it. As a matter of fact, you know, maybe I'll put this in a separate email folder, and then I will email her back and just send her a copy of the logo that she can use. So thank you, Lorelai. This one is called Under the Dome. Mark, the documentary was a lot. He's talking about the Under the Dome full documentary, which is, has millions of hits and is not on my channel. So I gave thousands of dollars away to that guy, which is fine. You know, it's, it, if it helps spread the, the Flyers community, I don't care. The documentary was a lot to wrap my head around. My brother and I are truth seekers in every aspect of the word. In the past, we have always seen things eye to eye from a very abstract point of view. This past weekend, we were discussing the flat earth theory. I've always believed in space and time and physics. Chemistry and math are beautiful. For me, space gave proof that there's more to life than what's on the horizon. I laughed at flat earth theories for a while, then found out my brother thinks it's flat. I value his opinions on the esoteric more than anyone else in the world. I was doing research and came across lots of not so convincing videos, podcasts, and documentaries. Then I seen yours. It was quite chilling. They, they way you laid out, oh, the, spell checker. The way you laid out the truths and facts was unlike the rest. I would love to talk more and pick your brain. Please get in touch with me. Below is my num and you have my email. I'm Justin, by the way. Thanks. Hope to hear from you soon. Justin, I would love to talk with you, but unfortunately, I get a lot of phone calls and emails, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm a month behind on my emails right now, and I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm going to be able to catch them anytime soon. This one's called India in a Flat Earth Plate Photo. Hi, Mark. The Hoosiers are going, joining the awakening. I just received my Indiana Flat Earth license plate, flat or F-L-A-T-R-T-H, see attached photo, and feel free to add to the slideshow. And I think I did. I'm going to download it, though, anyway, just to make sure I didn't miss it. So let's grab that. Show in folder. Show in folder. Move. I'm pretty sure I did this. I just kept the email around. Thanks, Nathan Wheat. It's a great name, Nathan Wheat. Flat Earth license plate. So you got, yeah, if you guys are doing, want to do something uh, fun with your <clears throat> license plates and send it to me. I will turn it into a compilation and I will turn it into, uh, I'll, I'll put it in all the slideshows and I'll make a thumbnail of it. So thanks. This one's called Deception Island. Mark, while playing around with Google Earth, I found this island off Antarctica. First pick I circled in red. The area is located in case you want to check it out yourself. Second pick is zoomed in and captured from Google Earth. Aside from the name itself, there's a few more things interesting about this island. The shape of the island re resembles an Ouroboros. Ouroboros? I can also see a face in the inlet side profile. Lastly, the greenish hue around everything is rather striking. I've been following this stuff for a couple of years and haven't heard anyone broach this subject. On a side note, if you look at the south end of King George Island, you'll see a base called the Great Wall Station. This base was created by the Chinese in 1985. You gotta zoom in close for the name to pop. You are an excellent spokesman for this subject, and I thank you for all you're doing. And that's from Larry. Thank you, Larry. And while well, I go, I'm just going to pop up these little pictures here. Oh, those are kind of interesting. Interesting island off. Yeah, but it's off the peninsula, and that's where everybody goes. I mean, it's not It's not bad. I'm, I'm glad you guys are looking down there. But if it's off the, the main peninsula, you got to remember that is where most of the tourists go, or go close to it. So that's an island that's going to be tough to hide, because it's just off the bottom of South America. Moving on, <clears throat> this one's called Plane Routes Can Prove or Disprove Flat Earth. Good Lord, I have watched various Flat Earth channels talk about how emergency landings prove the Flat Earth. They draw flight lines over the ball Earth and draw the same flights over the Flat Earth map. Hasn't anyone noticed that there would be a quite noticeable difference between flying over ocean waters on the ball Earth 
and on the flat earth, flying along the coast of China, flying directly over the Kamchatka Peninsula on to Los Angeles from Taiwan. There would be noticeable differences in other long distance ball earth versus flat earth flights. In my travels, I have never seen the curve of the ball earth, so find it plausible that the earth is something other than what we've been taught. However, the above mentioned controversy discredits the flat earth movement, as it seems no one has yet pointed out the obvious differences in land mass and ocean that ball earth and flat earth's flat earth flights fly over, which could definitely help settle the debate. I've listened to a few of your interviews with navigators and pilots and find it all quite fascinating. Thank you, Jay Crotty. K-R-O-T-T-Y. Thanks. Oh, it's Jessica. Jessica Crotty. Thanks, Jessica. Awesome. Um, again, keep look, watching more videos. There's, there's lots of stuff out there about flights. This one's called Survival Guide. Dear Mark, could you please send me your free survival guide? Keep it flat. Greetings, Samuel Vanderplank. And yes, I already sent it to him. And you guys want a free survival guide? Just all you have to do is email me and put, I want survival guide in the title. You don't have to say anything, whisper me sweet nothings or anything like that. And I will just send it off to you. It's two megs. It's about 100 pages. I encourage you to print it out because if you have the survival guide and the power goes out, that's the whole point of the survival guide, long-term power outage, you're going to be kind of stuck. Next one called Flat Earth Update. Flat Earth Update, the War Against God series. Mark, I apologize for not being in touch for a while. Myself and the team have been putting the finishing touches to our War Against God series on YouTube. This is a compilation of the best content on the enthralling subject of Flat Earth and the bigger spiritual picture of what is happening. All naughty words, naughty words, have been removed or bleeped. There are, however, some disturbing scenes on occasion, so viewer discretion is advised. We're indicated. Hmm. All right, then. Thank you very much for that art. This one's called, please contact me. Hey, Mark, I contacted you last week about a lady in Michigan trying to get a GoFundMe together. Please link me up with her. I too have a billboard going up and just recently met about 15 new Michigan flat earthers. Please help, Mark. Oh, and if it isn't too much to ask, that survival guide sounds interesting. Thanks again, Mark. Oh boy, I wonder if I sent that to him. I don't know if I, eh, maybe I did. I'm going to put that in the respond pile and I will send that to him this one's called thank God with me finally I'm free <laughs> I'm gonna read the first paragraph of this because I, I, I actually left this one in here yeah I get I get a ton of these emails but you, you'll recognize this hello honey how are you I'm happy to inform you that I have succeeded in getting my funds from the bank in the United Kingdom through the help of a partner from Romania I'll be traveling to Romania to be with him by 9.45 p.m. this evening. I thank you so much for trying to help me, but you couldn't because of the one thing or the other, but I did not forget your effort, though it didn't work for us, so I'm keeping a check of $220,000 for you with Reverend Father Johnson Bogo. <laughs> awesome. I, I totally should, should, should just bite on that hook. Because I, you know, people send me hundred thousand dollar checks from overseas all the time. Don't you get them? I do. This one's called Flat Earth Map News. Hi, Mark. This map was on our Chicago News, showing North Korea can hit Alaska with a missile, but they used a flat Earth map. A whole bunch of exclamation points. That's from Riardo. R I A R D O. Riardo. Riardo. Lozano. That's his name. Anyway, yeah, excellent. Excellent point. Just another flat earth map. Just keep putting it in there. Moving on. This one's called I Want Conference Tickets. Hi, Mark. My name is Billy. I've been a flat earther follower for about three years now, trying to convince my wife, April, but she says she needs more evidence. I talked to her, talked to her, Talk to her coming to the event with me, but I was late getting the tickets. So if you can help me to get two tickets for my wife, uh, can be convinced and influenced at the conference, I would love to go. Thanks. P.S. I love the work you're doing. Keep up the good work. Uh, yeah, Billy, I, and I, I forwarded that on to the conference people. If you guys don't have tickets yet to the Flat Earth Conference in North Carolina coming up November 9th, you might want to get on the waiting list. All you have to do is go to fe2017.com and check it out. It's going to be a lot of fun. I, I will help if you, know, if you can't get tickets, but I, I will give it a shot. Oh, let's see. This one is a little long. 
So probably no. Sorry, that one's too long. If you send me something that's like two or three pages, I probably can't read it because I'm trying to crank through these. This one's called Thanks, Mark. Your Flat Earth Clues series was one of the several to wake me up in February of this year. Seems like an eternity ago. Also, I just got my mom to sit down and watch the whole thing as well about halfway through, and I can see that she is flat smacked. It's beautiful to witness. Anyway, all this has really inspired me musically, so I'm recording a Flat Earth concept record and just made this video to my small part. Please check it out and share on your music playlist if you enjoy. Thanks. And it's from Realm Trotter. And he actually didn't send me the link, which, as you know, is a rookie mistake. You hate to see it. This one's called ISS Weather Anomalies. Hello, Mark. My name is also Mark, only it's with a C. I have heard several Flat Earthers mention the weather not matching up with what the ISS is showing us, but after searching the vids, I can't find any. Can you help me out, please? Thanks in advance, Mark. P.S. Enjoy your theories and hard work. Uh, as far as the ISS vids not matching up with the weather, yeah, yeah, the guy you want to follow is Jaron uh, or, or Globebusters. That won't go go with one of those two guys because they're following the ISS live feeds all the time, and I'm pretty sure they're double checking with the with the with the weather. So go to Jaronism, J E R A N I S M, or Globebusters. They'll be able to get you on the right path. This one's called Flat Revival Magazine. Invitation to contribute to the opening September 2017 issue. And I don't think he sent me anything since then, but I'm going to read it anyway. Mark, my name is Ty Gordon. I'll be launching the modern world's first Flat Earth devoted magazine called Flat Revival. The GoFundMe for the project was announced during Infinite Plain Society's Wednesday night live stream. Ongoing column. If you're interested in having a recurring column in the magazine, I think it would make a great counterpoint to your YouTube work. There is... Still nothing quite like holding a printed publication in your hands and being able to hand it to someone else. If you don't feel you have time to produce a reoccurring article, I'm sure we can figure something out for the flagship issue and interview may, uh, perhaps. Call anytime if you have questions about the magazine or would rather converse on the phone. Thanks for your time, Ty. Attached is a logo for the magazine. Yeah, pretty cool. Flat Revival Magazine. Um, If he's listening, get a hold of me again. Because, yeah, I can I can definitely write something for, for, for that. Don't mind doing that at all. This one's called Quick Question. Mark, hey, do you remember the episode where a caller told a story about during World War II on a ship in the Pacific? They, or their source of the story, saw, saw a large tower going to the sky? Perhaps I heard it wrong, but it's always been stuck in the back of my mind. would be fascinating to research that further. Thanks, Bill Duke. Bill, I do not know the name of that episode. If somebody else does, please let me know. But I think it kind of ties into the, the three pillars that are holding up the sky from the Masonic lore. And not just Masonic, but there's other lore where there's three huge pillars that are actually reinforcing the dome from the ground. Kind of invisible in some ways. But when you get up close, you definitely can see them. There's been weird stories about Navy ships that had to go around them. And it takes days to go around them. Days. So yeah, if anyone, you know, the largest structure, you know, part of the largest structure ever in our civilization that'd be kind of interesting this one's called west jet pilot guest gets asked a curvature curvature question sorry i'm stumbling a little bit of my words here i need some tang <clears throat> excuse me <sighs> hopefully that helps hi mark i just got back from nanaimo bc today and didn't know if this audio i took would be of any use to you on the way flying there i went into the cockpit of both flights after we landed there were two legs of the flight, Saskatoon and Calgary, then Calgary to Nanaimo. I asked both pilots about the curvature of the Earth and how their plane adjusted for it. I then asked the pilot directly if he really believed that the software did that. I wish I had a video of his face to see his reaction to my question. It reeked of indignance. Anyway, I had a phone recording in my hand as we talked in the cockpit and then edited out the gaps and trivial stuff. Let me know what you think. Hope all is well. Clint the Saskatoon guy. And yeah, it was it was an interesting thing. But please, by all means, you know, ask pilots on the way out. Don't don't ask them on the way in because God only knows they'll, they'll let you continue flying, but that'll change soon enough. This one's called Subject Is This Is Tripping Me Out. Go ahead and read this online. 
Friday, July 7th, roughly 7 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time, U.S. Virgin Islands. Sitting on my front porch with binoculars in hand, waiting for the moon to rise. Not the full moon, just the moon. The effing full moon breaks through the low-lying clouds. The full moon is and was not due until Sunday evening, July 10th. This moon on Friday night was 99.99% full. If you want to argue, maybe around the 8 o'clock area of the moon's circle, it was not 100% full, but it would be very, very strong argument. That's not the reason for this email. The real reason for this email message is that the clouds were going behind the effing moon. With binoculars focused on the immediate area, I watched clouds pass by in the eastern sky and the southern sky and then pass behind the F and moon. How does the F, how does the, how the F does that happen if the moon is 237,000 miles from Earth? These clouds were not 237,000 plus miles from Earth, were they? I don't think so because they were dumping rain on us here in the Virgin Islands earlier the very same day. I've heard of clouds getting behind the moon before, but I've never seen it before with my own eyes. My jaw dropped when I saw this, and I could only think this is, without a doubt, some kind of in-your-face BS they are pulling because we never look up. The moon would have to be only a couple of miles away for those clouds to be able to pass behind the moon. Those clouds were not that high. What the F is going on? That's from Peter in the Virgin Islands. Good point, Peter. And, and there's a lot of things. I mean, honestly, since then, the eclipse has really, really done a number on us. Everybody's covering the eclipse, which is very, very cool. But thank you for reaching out with that one. This one's called <clears throat> the full, this full, this moon landing hoax video claims NASA faked Apollo 11 mission full. And it's a YouTube link. And it's from Tony. And it says that. That's all the, the link. You can check this out on YouTube. This moon landing hoax video claims NASA faked Apollo 11. It's not a flat earth video. Well, it's got 60,000 views. So check it out if you get a chance. That's awesome. Thanks, Tony. This one's called Regarding Your Documentaries. Hi, Mark. I am Imraz from India. I just stumbled upon one of your videos yesterday and ended up watching full series of 10 documentaries you have uploaded. Sorry, I had some barbecue. And I'm hooked on this flat earth debate. Your documentaries are the best out of, out of, best out of videos I have watched until now. But only one question pops up in my mind is about the magnetic poles in flat earth. How do magnets always point north on flat earth? I tried to do some research on this topic, but no success. Have you made any videos on this topic? If so, can you please share the link? And if you haven't made, then I think it's about time to look into this topic. Cheers, Imraz Kosha. Hey, Imraz. Check out DITRH. He did a bunch of uh, cool little videos on the magnetic north. And that is just, you know, put a heavy magnet in the middle of the flat earth map and put a compass on the outside. The, the north will always point to the center, <clears throat> which works perfectly. It, 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 and when you're navigating by ship, that's what you would expect. And you could also simulate it on a globe. Works pretty well. But DITRH, he's got them all set up for you. This one's called Low Earth Orbit Awakening. Hello, Mark. Thanks again for your persistent work hammering the false heliocentric model given to us by Satan and his minions. You've always said, and I agree, that you have to come at people sideways in order to get their foot in the door of understanding the flat Earth. I believe a great way in doing that is to have a compilation video of NASA employees and politicians stating how we cannot leave low Earth orbit, or we might be able to one day. It would be important to not even mention or hint at Flat Earth within this video. The purpose would simply be to help solidify the area that there have been multiple full admissions. We have never left low or or orbit, therefore shattering the ongoing lie of the moon landing, which I believe is the first major step in understanding the entire picture. A compilation piece like this would be extremely helpful in jumpstarting the thinking in baby boomer, boomers such as my father, who as a child watched the moon landings on television. I would like to commission you for this job, considering you are the best man for it. I myself would not be. Let me know your thoughts, and I hope this could be another small step for mankind to wake up. Thank you, Curtis. Uh, Curtis has already been done. Uh, there's been several people that have already made compilations along those lines where uh, they've stated different politicians and NASA employees. Exactly what you just said. It cannot leave low Earth orbit. So check them out. They're all out there. This one's called No Subject. Hi, Mark. Just want to make sure you're aware of my new Flat Earth series called The Square and Stationary Earth, 
which was inspired when I read Orlando Ferguson's birth, I'm sorry, birth book, The Square World. And some of the videos are called Square and Stationary Flat Earth, No Earth Shadow, Moon Map, Apostle Peter Shown, Square World. Any thoughts or comments would be welcome. Thank you again for the Flat Earth Clues. I know you hear this all the time, but that's the series that started my journey into searching these things out for myself. With gratitude, John, Timeline to Eternity. Cool, John. Glad I could help. Seriously. This one's called, Hi Mark, Flat Earth, I dis Flat Earth Facts I Discovered. Mark, please feel free to discuss this information in future, vi future videos. I don't need any credit for it, but if you feel like giving me a shout out, that would be cool. If you do give me a shout out, please just use my first name. Mostly I just want this info to spread because I think it's extremely telling of the reality of NASA lies and people really need solid facts that are indisputable. Take care. So I'm not gonna use, did I already say the name? That doesn't really matter. Uh, let's see here, uh, videos. Uh, uh, fully lo loaded shuttle weighs a ghastly 4.4 million pounds, yet NASA claims it travels more than 10 times faster than the average bullet and 23 times faster than the speed of sound. Shouldn't this feat produce one of the biggest sonic booms of all time? I've never heard of any shuttle footage I've watched and you can see the rings around jets when they pass the speed of sound just before the boom occurs. I've never seen that with any launch footage either. Yeah, good point. The, the, the rocket should break the speed of sound really, really quickly. Good point. Excellent. This one's called... Nope. That's an update. I'm not going to read that one. This one's called Our Flat World. Mark, you are the reason I came to Flat Earth. You have spoken about the wood carvings from Germany and the 1500 with UFOs. I think that the other flat worlds connected to our world past the ice wall have been in contact with us forever. I was listening to Brother Sanchez and he said the same thing in a podcast. Maybe we are used as chessmen or we are their reality television. Take care, Stephen Ford. Yeah, yeah. if you don't know what I'm talking about, look up the 1561 Nuremberg event. Uh, the greatest UFO sighting of all time, which nobody talks about. I mean, ancient aliens br mentioned it briefly. Every, everybody talks about Roswell and Aurora, Texas in 1899. No, 1561 Germany. They were up there for a full hour just duking it out. Massive armadas going over the, the one of the biggest cities in Germany of this day. So long, the sketch artists, they didn't need photography. They just came out and sketched the whole thing while they were eating their um, bratwurst and schnitz and gluben or whatever they have for breakfast over there. This one's called 25K Cha-Ching. Don't progress my full name if you're reading this on emails. Show thanks. Mark, there's some fellow calling himself George Hanatiak on the YouTube. I'm sorry, this is all in text speak. About the six-year-old girl saying the earth is flat who is red hot to debate you or Jeffrey Grubb. Says you've been dodging him. <laughs> Whatever. And I've been dodging anybody. If people want to talk to me, they can absolutely try to talk to me. I never get those emails. I suggested that he should take up the $25,000 challenge and debate Mr. Grupp. Anyway, I had a bit of a go at him on gravity. I'm pretty sure I shut him up about not being able to prove via laboratory experimentation that it exists or being able to prove that the gravitational constant constant G exists either or being able to offer any reasonable explanation as to how or why it works unless unlike well-known forces such as electromagnetism gravity the only force in the universe without an energy source hope something can be worked out best regards Jim now yeah, I, I don't dodge anybody I will talk to pretty much any, I've had people back out of interviews with me and but I have not dodged anyone along those lines why would I? What, what have I got to lose? This one's called Subject Matter Experts. Dear Mark, I've been listening to and enjoying your show for a few years now. Thank you for that. I came across this video yesterday by a subject matter expert, a physicist who is sympathetic to Flat Earth. I thought you might be interested in seeing it and maybe getting him onto your show. Keep up the good work, FEP. And the show is called Scientists Sympathetic to Flat Earth. Plus, how to prove flat Earth? Yeah, I, yeah, I watched it and gave it a thumbs up. It's good. Doesn't have a lot of subs, but it's good. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, my name is Krista. I would first like to thank you for your extensive research in in dorma in dormation in dormation on this. I don't, I don't. Is that a word? In dormation. 
as I have also done a lot of digging. My family and friends refuse to even touch the subject. They say it's crazy and I must be on drugs. I wouldn't even give this a chance for a year at least. Then one day I finally did and come to find out my li a lifelong instinct was true, but my faith in not being lied to my whole life again, in my case, was, well, hopeful, but not real. Anyhow, I guess my point here is I am stuck. I have been for about two years now. This does not have to do with more than just flat earth. I am not obsessed with all conspiracies, but I am highly concerned that so many have turned out to be factual. If you're in interested in discussing any of this, or maybe willing to share some insight on how to live again, I would highly appreciate your input. Thanks, Krista. Krista, I, not much advice I can give you there. Just stick with it. it you know, the, this thing just keeps growing and growing and growing. If it was, a, I think it was 18.6 million uh, relevant search results as of last night, which is massive considering it was uh, just about 17.9, pushing 18 when, uh, when I was even thinking about working on this Eclipse stuff. I mean, it's really, really been ramping up. So the energy's out there. I know it gets a little tough sometimes, but stick with it or take a break. Go off and, and, and relax for a bit and then come back. You know, flatter not going anywhere. This one's called Thank You For Your Videos. Mark, I watched your two-hour video on Flat Earth FET, and I'm right there with you, and I'm trying to find my own way through this new understanding. So I wanted to offer you a suggestion. Read the Book of Enoch, and then see if you get insight into who the advanced civilization or the authority might be. I think you are right on with the fact that the authority is hiding proof of God, and one question you did not seem to cover in your video, which is, who would do this? I only watched this one video, so maybe you have looked into this elsewhere. Otherwise, see if the Book of Enoch connects any dots for you. Kind regards, Mark Farnan. And you're absolutely right, Mark. The uh, The Book of Enoch, a fascinating book. Not canonized, but still really, really interesting. I, uh, in fact, I just got back from the Atlanta Flat Earth debate with Zen Garcia versus Dr. Stephen Pigeon, and Zen wrote a great book about how the Book of Enoch and the Flat Earth are linked. And you can't have one without the other. And that the Book of Enoch really describes how the whole world is actually set up structurally. It's fascinating. So, yeah, I think the Book of Enoch has a lot of clues in those regards. So thank you for that. This one's... Oh, boy. This one's big. Hang on. This one's called You're Going to Love This Clip. Uh, it's about... Hang on. I'm just kind of scanning it real quick here. No, too, too much, too much math in it. Uh, people, I, it's a radio show. There's only so much I can do there. This one's called Tower of Babel. Mark, I was listening to and watching Flat Earth Clues with, with an open mind because like facing 9-11 truth, I want to know what truth is no matter how upsetting. I began realizing you are a Christian fundamentalist when you told the Babel story without mentioning it. It was from the Bible. I'd respect you more if you stated your motive up front. Well, yeah, but there's a reason. Well, doesn't matter. As to your summation, I could have saved you loads of time by saying simply, integrity is doing the right thing even when no one is watching. Moral behavior is nothing but an empty act, as is theatrical drama. If you are behaving in a morally correct manner only because you know you are being watched, reward and punishment is hardly genuine criteria for treating others as you would yourself, not better. You have to love and take care of yourself fully before you can be worth an atom to anyone else. If God exists, and I'm sure he, she, it does, because I know brilliant, caring, loving, creative people like you, and I cannot exist out of nothing for no reason, indeed, it is pure science. If all that exists is the ultimate effect, there must be needs be an ultimate cause which ancient god text one uses is not different ultimately than choice of clothes or haircut if one is objectively pure and honest about getting to the truth and doesn't care what it is religion is hardly the place to start or as in your case with flat earth clues end i don't care if the earth is a triangle a vast pyramid in a space filled with sand Truth seekers transcend the what or who and want the essence. We are being controlled, fooled, and manipulated. Let's start with that and work outward from there. Bible thumping will get you ignored more than get people to listen to your compelling argument for flat earth. 
Let's ask that guy who did the Red Bull space dive what he saw. Regular guys and gals need to do regular things to get to the truth. Baby steps, brother. We have to do the right things for the right reasons. Not because the ultimate big brother in the sky is watching, but because of human compassion and passion for truth. Peace, Chris out of Bronx, New York. And he says, P.S. Of course people run lights knowing they are on camera. They do it daily. They are called risk takers or rich guys. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anyone that uh, that's wealthy enough to just blow red lights and, and pick up those uh, pick up those tickets. But who knows? Okay, let's move it on. This one's called Six Week Ordeal and Flat Earth Song. Oh boy, I think I owe this guy a video too. Mark, for the last six weeks I've been looking into this flat earth idea almost day and night. The first day was literally all night and in the morning I made my discovery public on my Facebook account. I am in the nation of Islam, you know, Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, Louis Farrakhan. Well, by the second week of the flat earth information went nation of Islam Facebook viral or near Facebook viral. It depends on who's measuring, I suppose. I know this. The discussion became prominent on many news feeds within my network due to the information I was sharing, and subsequently it became available to the network of those associated with me. Suffice it to say, I got a text message saying the information made it to the leader of the Nation of Islam, that being Minister Louis Farrakhan himself. About four days ago, I decided to make a song basically outlining my six-week ordeal. Fortunately, I'm a pretty decent musician that's full of passion and fire. My track is aptly named The Hologram. I have enclosed it here. I had the idea that you or another presenter can use it at the Flat Earth Convention. I only reached out to you so far. Keep in mind, I've only been studying six weeks, so my Rolodex isn't that big. I only know your name and a few others. I reached out to you first because you said in your videos that you respond to both calls and emails. The song officially starts at 45 seconds. However, the first 22 seconds is an intro from the movie The Ten Commandments. And from 23 seconds to 45, maybe you want to flare etching into stone into the song. Um, anyway, many thanks. Song below. Abraham Muhammad. And thank you. I actually do have that song on my on my desktop. I just been so busy. I haven't had time to make a video for it, but I I may have a little time coming up because I don't have an interview scheduled. What day is today? Thursday. I don't have any. Uh, don't think I have an interview scheduled for the weekend. So maybe I I will I will get to it. Uh, no promises, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Sorry. This one's called Chicago Meetup. That's gonna be. It looks like it was July 22nd. Uh, let's see, cancel, can you promote it? Okay, that was, I'm not going to read that one. Rocket launch. This one's called rocket launch. Mark, the stabilization from what I've been told as the rocket propels upward from zero miles an hour is accomplished by gyros. This was told, was told to me by my father and uncle during a discussion. My uncle is a retired NASA and a complete asshole. But as you know, we can't believe anything, but this does solve the problem easily. Thanks, David B. Thanks, David. Awesome. This one's called, quote from Tolstoy. The most difficult subjects can be explained to the most slow-witted man if he has not formed any idea of them already. But the simplest thing can be made clear to the most intelligent man if he is firmly persuaded that he knows already, without a shadow of doubt, what is laid before him. Hmm. That's from Leo Tolstoy, 1897. Thank you for that. That's from Mike. This one's called Flat Earth Orthodox. Hi, Mark and Patricia. Feel free to read this email on air, but please leave out my name and identifying information. Thank you. I've been watching Flat Earth videos since March of this year and find this whole topic quite fascinating and worthy of further exploration. As a longtime author, researcher, and filmmaker, I'm well aware of the conspiracies, fake news, and plots to dumb down the population through manipulative educational systems, mass media, and man-made religion. So an objective look at the moon landings, NASA CGI imagery, and other cover-ups are not too difficult to consider. Here's an additional angle to check out. As you and many others have mentioned, ancient cosmologies from various civilizations point to a geocentric worldview, including flat, dome-covered firmament Earth plane. Here are some direct connections to the ancient faith known as the Eastern Orthodox Church. The Orthodox Church includes more books of the Bible than Catholic or Protestant Bibles, and the Ethiopian Orthodox Church includes the Book of Enoch in their canon of scriptures. 
Orthodox churches are related to this Temple of Solomon, designed with a large dome in the center and representations of God looking down from the heavens. The base of the church is generally made in a square with four corners, and the altar is placed in the east, representing the Ark of the Covenant and Christ. Google images of Orthodox churches, and you'll see what I'm looking at. The only church in Antarctica is Russian Orthodox. Russian Orthodox Patriarch Kirill went to Antarctica after meeting with the Pope Francis in Cuba in February of 2016. Early church fathers wrote extensively on the creation of the earth. Consider looking further into the Eastern Orthodox connection with ancient cosmology, including, but not limited to, ideas about evolution, creation, and the still flat earth. You might want to reach out to Abbot Trifon at the Owl Merciful sorry, All Merciful Savior Monastery in Vashon Island, or other Orthodox Christian monastics, 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 for more information about what the early church fathers taught about the uniqueness of the earth in God's creation. Interesting. Interesting. And I will not give out his name. Thank you for that. Sorry it took me so long to, uh, to read that one. Okay, how many more we got here? This one's called Interview with Admiral Byrd, 1954. Hi, Mark. I watched the whole two-hour video on using the globe to hide God. This was the main video I used to send to friends to refuse to, who refused to give up their concept and belief in global warming. The only way I can convince them is to prove that one cannot have global warming without a globe. Lots of people call you a shill, but that's hard for me to believe considering all the wonderful information you put out there to, to disprove the globe. But this video was truly wonderful in what I wanted to... Sorry. What I wanted to say to the others. I won't send any videos of anyone if I detect even a lie in them. Whether one wants to believe in a superior entity better known as our creator is their own business. I believe in God, but I don't believe in religion. God will lead us into truth if we search for it. Jesus in the Bible never called anyone Christian. They were believers or followers of the truth, who Jesus is. I wouldn't want to be on a deserted island with many of the Christians I know. They are so mean and opinionated, but then that's another story. On listening to that two-hour video, I noticed that you pronounced the name of that show, which featured Admiral, Byrd's, uh, Admiral Byrd wrong. I was 12 years old when that show uh, came out. My memory is excellent. It was called the Long Jeans Whitnauer Hour. I'll give you the pronunciation. Yeah, I know. I called it Long Jeans. It's called Long Jeans. And Whitnauer. Yep. Describe the show. Uh, let's see. The sponsor of that was the watch company. Yep. I am, I'm just correcting this because there are a lot of old folks out there who remember those days and would be nice to have it pronounced as it was known to be. Keep up the good work, Arlene. P.S. If you ever need a hand at researching something, let me know and I'll be glad to help. I've been told they do an excellent job. Thanks, Arlene. And great. Uh, yeah, you're, I, I was corrected on that pronunciation literally, I think, within two or three weeks after the first video came out. So, thanks. Super. Great. This one's called... Couple Questions. Mark, hi, my name is Michael. Recent flat earther. I live in Souk. Wait, Souk? Souk. S-O-O-K-E. That's in Canada. I was actually in Souk. I did a meet up there. My friend Dante was telling me about the flat earth seminar here that I sadly missed. Curious about tossing another one in the fall, maybe. He told me you live in Vic. That would be Victoria. Wouldn't mind chatting sometime in real life. Are you on Crackbook? <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to respond to him. Uh, no, I am not in Vic at the moment. I am single again. And I am living uh, down on Whidbey Island, Washington. Which is that actually not that far, but it would take a little doing. I mean, even from Vic to, to Souk took a little driving to do. I might be able to do something in, in Vic. If you want to do something in, in, in Vic, maybe I might take the trip up there. But you have to let me know. I mean, my schedule is getting more and more hectic. Maybe. Maybe. I can do Northwest. I did the Seattle thing, so I might be able to do the uh, the Anacortes run again. It's a nice ferry ride. Anyway, this one's called Missiles and Admiral Bird. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. I tried you by phone, but that didn't work, so I'll try this. I hope this meets you most well. Just a couple of quick questions. This is not a challenge. In just a short time, the spinning globe theory has become seemingly ludicrous to me. I'm not a real bright bulb, but I am a seeker, and unless... 
I am in a deep illusion, fairly open-minded. Why did the Russians and Americans fire nuclear missiles towards the dome? Were they actually trying to break it or just or go through? I'm dumb and dumbfounded by that one. The mineral-rich content, the size of the United States that Admiral Byrd spoke of, uh, was that in front of the ice wall? This side of it, how was it not covered in ice and snow? It seems impossible that he could have just explored the resources to the extent that he claimed. Where do you suppose Shackleton and Admondson and Scott actually went? Thank you and all the best to you, Richard Cosano. Uh, yeah, in this order, I'll do it real quick. Yes, they were trying to break through, and then they were just trying to map the sky. All the resources that Bird was talking about uh, were inland, quite a ways inland. It was not at the wall itself. It was probably a thousand miles inland, or maybe a couple hundred miles. I think it was a couple hundred miles inland. And what was the last thing? Um... Oh, as far as Shackleton and Admonson and those other guys, uh, they were around, you know, they, they went around, uh, you know, to different parts of Antarctica, but they never crossed it. Nobody crossed it. I, Bird got close, but he ran into the barrier. That's the short answers I've got for all of you there. Okay, what else? This one's called Just Some Random Images. Hey, Mark, found you a while back while listening to Chris and Cherie and have been tagging along with your YouTube channel since. I'm an Australian citizen, former Mason, level undisclosed. Moved interstate to refresh my life and start again. Thought you might enjoy some freshly edited images. I'm a firm believer that there is more to the flat earth than what we realize. One question that I must throw forward. Have you pondered the fact that we may be living on the most northern sector of a super earth? On a, yes, I have. It, it's a much, much bigger Earth. Yes, but you're just holding on to a globe model when you're doing that. You're just like, well, couldn't it be just I still? I still, I still like the globe. I like the globe too. Doesn't mean you're on a super Earth though. Unaware that we are only aware of one sixth of our world. I edited up an image quickly. Must admit to give you the idea of what I'm referring to. It would certainly explain a lot. The ice wall would fit perfectly into this reality. Preference to be made that you do not mention this email on air. Oh, seriously. But feel free to edit and use images supplied. Well, I didn't mention your name. So would love to have a chat though if you'd be up for it. And so I'm not going to give you your, I'm not going to mention your name, uh, but um, but I'm going to keep the email in here because it doesn't give away anything. This one's called Dome Shield. Hello, Mark. Disregard my last email. I have all my answers from your recent conversations on the YouTube interview on 713. I know you are busy, so I'll just say I have only subscribed to three, but I do enjoy your flat Earth clues very much. Hopefully not many stars will fall. They burn out and fall to the plane. Some actually survive. Since all the cultures believe heaven is above the dome, it must be completely around our entire URF. I have a doctorate in aerospace engineering, and it's enlightening to hear from someone I can respect and accept, but still ask questions. Best regards, LK at UConn. Awesome. If you ever want to talk anonymously, you know, if you've got an aerospace degree, I'd love to I'd love to get you on the show if you're listening to this. Okay. This one's called Thank You for Fat Flat Earth Clues by George. That's all it says. You're very welcome. How much time do I got? Uh five. A little bit more. And then we'll we'll do you know what we'll do two more. And then that'll wrap up this little section. This one's called New Florida Flat Earth Tag. Skywater. Hi, Mark. Just got my license plate. Skywater. S-K-Y-W-A-T-R, which is a Shamayam Shah equals Sky Mayam. I'm sorry. No, no. Sorry. Shah equals Sky. Mayam, M-A-Y-I-M, equals water in Hebrew, which is heaven. The water is above the firmament. That's from Julie Williams. Thank you, Julie, and I already included it in my slideshow. It'll be there forever, and it'll be on my compilations from this point going forward. Thank you, thank you. And let's end on this one. This is kind of a happy little thing. This one's called Flat Earther Boy Song. What's up, Mark? I absolutely love all your work. I'm the CEO of the Beak the BeatFreaks.net. That's B-E-A-T-R-E-A-K-Z.net. DJs and music producers, and we made a song using a clip from one of your TFR shows. It's the one of that second grader boy who asked his teacher about the curvature of the water, etc. Anyway, hope you like and feel free to share away. Thanks again and take care. And I think I already grabbed this one, but let's make sure. Yeah, I think I... 
Yep, yep, already thumbed it up, and I, yep, yep, thumbed it up, added to my playlist, and that's all I need from that, so thank you, and I think that is going to do it for now. I know it's probably a little shorter than normal, but I had to break in the middle because I had a neighbor come over. So, again, if you want to email me anything, any questions, I may read it on air, I may not. Email to msargent23 at comcast.net. And if I don't read it on Strange World, which chances are I'm not going to, is because Strange World's now just wall-to-wall -wall calls. It's on True Frequency Radio on Tuesday nights currently. Then I will try to do it here. And I, I can't respond to them all, unfortunately. I just get way, way too many. But I, I will try to, to uh, you know, if, if you desperately needing of help, and I know that you probably won't be able to find it easily on YouTube, I will try to get to it here or to respond to you directly. Sometimes I'll respond way before I actually read it on air and I just read it on air just so other people know what questions come in. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. So um, until next time, stay flat. <laughs>